Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I hope you've already got yourself a t-shirt so when you do, you can enter yourself into the competition to come hang out. We'll let you know more about that later. Today in the workshop, the plan is... Jamie, what is the plan? Let's go. Why do you have so much milk? Okay, so while he's still drinking his milk, the plan is to make the M9 Bayonet from CSGO. So it's a- what is CSGO? I believe it's a video game. I have played it myself. I am a master at it. I'm better at it than I am blacksmithing. Yeah, that's not really saying much. What is the video game? The video game is a 5v5 shooter and inside the game- Okay, hang on a second, hang on a second. 5v5 shooter. I don't know what that means. Okay, although I have a very young face, when it comes to video games, I'm 70 years old. What does that mean? So, there's five people on one team, five people on the other team, they shoot each other, there's two bomb sites, one team plants the bomb, the other one So basically it. you just go around killing other people in the game? Essentially, yeah, but you can do it with some fancy looking knives, and that's what we are planning to do. So Jamie suggested one of these CSGO knives, and so we're gonna do the M9 bayonet, we're gonna make it out of Damascus. It's gonna be a uh, pretty challenging knife to make because there's a lot of machining work involved on it, and a lot of kind of, a lot of things that I haven't really done on any blade, so I'm gonna have to come up with interesting fixtures and all of this, but it's sure to be a lot of fun. So thank you for joining me. Hope you enjoy. So of course I'm gonna need some steel from which to make this bayonet. And you remember the first sword I ever made? I made way too much steel for the sword and I have extra. It's spare right here. So what I'm gonna do to this piece, just like on the sword, I am going to mill all four sides so they're nice and clean and crisp. We're gonna go in the bandsaw. We're gonna cut at a 33 degree angle. We're gonna flip the pieces up and we're gonna forge weld it together. This is gonna be mosaicing the pattern up the blade so that it hopefully looks really, really cool. So first things first, I'm going to put one of these things in the mill, carbide tips, that's gonna cut through that Damascus steel nice and easily, and we're gonna face off all four sides, easy peasy, then we'll go to the bandsaw. This piece here is now in squared up. Beautiful, that's exactly what I want. There's now no scale on there, no impurities to get in the steel. I have this piece of flat bar there, so that when I cut this, um, it's gonna be able to be supported when we get to the very back end here and it can't be gripped in the vice jaws. I'm gonna lay this on this bar and we're gonna throw a bead of weld right in there so that at the last cuts, I can hold just this piece and we'll still be able to cut it. So of course it's a little bit of welding and then straight into the bandsaw. So now is probably as good a time as any for me to learn how to TIG weld. Never TIG welded in my life, uh, never set up a TIG welder, never, and I don't have an appropriate helmet for TIG welding. I, this is a, this is way too dark for TIG welding. We're gonna see if we can make this work. This is Sam's TIG welder, uh, which he's letting me use here. And it's handy, because he dropped it off just the other day, so I, I guess I might as well give her a go. Right, so this plugs into the wall, right? No, no, I don't think so. Ah, this plugs into the wall. I, I don't know how I'm gonna wire that up. I, it's gonna take some effort to, to wire that up, but I think we're gonna make it work. Oh my God! What the, what? <laughs> I didn't finish school, but I'm pretty sure that counts to four. Oh, there are screws. Mm -hmm. 
It goes nothing. We see how it goes. I've got a test piece right here. I don't have any filler. I'm not going to use any filler on all of this, and uh, we'll see if it works. Admittedly, I did try and turn on the machine without the plug being on, so I might not be the best person to try and learn how to do this when I don't even know how to turn a plug on, but we'll see. Yeah. Uh, what? I just dig welded badly, but I dig welded. I dig welded! <laughs> Whoa! That's that's crazy. <gasps> this is so much fun. Oh yes, I like this. Okay, so these are all TIG welded together, and I then MIG welded it onto this bar so I could have some filler metal, and it went pretty well. The reason that I do this is so that then when I heat it up, and then I forge weld it, no oxygen is getting in there, and I can guarantee the cleanliness of the surfaces for the forge weld. Hopefully, now that I'm about to go into the forge, this will indeed all work well, and all forge weld up, so we can make as good of a CSGO bayonet as possible. Forge welded it together and it feels pretty solid. I don't think I've got any issues. Now, of course, where I put that TIG weld that melts in the steel from around it means that pattern is gonna get all messed up. So I'm now gonna let it cool down. We're gonna take the small grinder, a little four and a half inch grinder, and it won't take much grinding here because there's no filler metal. We're gonna grind that all out before we then put it back in the fire and forge this blade. Okay, so my plan right here, rightly or wrongly, is I'm gonna create an offset taper. So I'm holding the bar level with the anvil, and I'm just striking at an angle with the hand hammer if you see me do. Now obviously, I'm gonna want this to sweep up, but I wanna first at least get a base taper in there before I do that. Again, rightly or wrongly, you know, like I keep saying, I, I'm not a knife maker, but we have fun, and, uh, and we give it a go nonetheless. With this particular knife, I'm not going to be forging in the bevels. The reason is that obviously, as you guys have seen, if you're familiar with the knife, there's all sorts of stuff that gets done to it. I'm going to have to mill it, I'm going to have to yada yada yada, do all that stuff. So what I definitely don't want is bevels that then make it very difficult to clamp down. I want to be able to keep this as flat as possible and as thick as possible so that I have a lot to work with in the finishing stage afterwards.
This pattern is gonna be unbelievable. It's gonna be crazy. What a day it has been. Thank you so much for watching. If you're not subscribed yet, we're making videos as much as we can. We're doing five or six amazing videos like this every week. Join this movement of people that love making things because that is just the best thing ever. There is nothing better than making stuff. Hit subscribe and I'll see you tomorrow as we take on part two of this build. If you're watching in the future, part two is gonna be right there. We got all sorts of amazing projects coming up, so make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit like, make sure you're commenting, and make sure you're sharing these videos with your friends, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Bye-bye.